What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Pete, I got my really good friend Jordan with us today, and he's gonna talk to us about his Evo 4 that he brought in. We did some modifications to it, went over the car, made it super clean. Uh, we wanna take you for a test drive today, give you some of the Evo 4 experience and show you what it's all about. And you're watching HD Works. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Jordan. If it's the first time here, please hit the subscribe button. Behind me, I have my Evo 4. When I found the car, um, when I got it over here, I was pretty much pretty clean. Um, I brought it to Pete over at HG Works. I've known him for a little while prior. Uh, he'd end up doing a bunch of preventative maintenance for me, time and belt, water pump, generic Evo stuff, and got it all road ready for me. I was able to enjoy it for a little while, um, for about six months and the car broke down and actually caught on fire uh, due to a turbo issue. Brought it back to Pete, kind of wanted to keep it OEM plus. And one of the first things I wanted to do was get some wheels on it. Um, I ended up getting TME wheels off of eBay and then uh, Pete hooked me up with some Evo 9 Brembos and then we ended up painting them uh, Bayside Blue. The reason why I decided to go with a four instead of a eight or nine is when I was growing up, I used to watch rally racing with my dad all the time. And thinking back to that when I was a kid, the threes and the fours with the big fog lights, the big wing on the back of it, just screams rally racing to me more than the more modern Evos. You know, it's one of my favorite aspects of the car. When it came to the exhaust, uh, we were a little limited uh, with being an Evo 4. Uh, Pete was able to hook me up with an HKS catback for the Evo 4. He got me a downpipe from MA Performance for an 8.9, but there was a big gap, so Pete made me a custom midpipe in order to hook it all up. You can actually check this exhaust setup on episode one of the vlog for HD Works up here to the left. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but this is a 1996 Evo 4 RS. The RS stands for Rally Sport. It's a little bit more bare bones. There's no sound denning. There's no power windows. It's all roll up. It's got basic seats. Mitsubishi's idea about it before was they sold this model with steelies, no radio, no air conditioning to put racing seats in it, put real wheels on it and just track it, whether it be on the dirt or a track. Um, fortunately, mine did come with AC factory. Um, it did have an aftermarket radio. Um, I didn't like it. So when Pete and I talked about it, we put an Evo 9 radio in and some MR gauges to kind of give it that more OEM plus feel. My HKS boost gauge did not work and Pete did some magic and brought that back to life. And then um, I did want to talk about the, uh, my WK Motorsport shifter. Pete recommended this to me a while ago and you know, I, I put it in and I wouldn't go back. I think any Evo owner, if this is the only mod you do, this is something you have to do. If you guys are wondering where I picked up the shifter, uh, Pete at HD Works actually sells it. I actually bought it from him. There will be a link in the description below with the discount code. That does it for the interior. We're gonna move on to my favorite part and probably the most of your guys' favorite part as well is the engine bay. I'm gonna let Pete take it over from there and let him talk about it. So I always wanna make sure that the colors on the entire car make sense. We made sure that the valve cover matches the brakes. So the Bayside Blue he picked, I love it. Great color, looks amazing in the sun. And then kind of put it all back together. We did titanium studs. Uh, the turbo was upgraded after we had the little turbo incident. Uh, Arginary did a nice uh, six and a half TME bladed turbo. Um, so that's in there. Uh, map down pipe that we had Jordan talked about a little bit. We had to make, because this is a little bit different, the front subframes in these cars. So it works in the front. The down pipe works in the front, but it doesn't work where the subframe goes and the mounting provisions. So I had to make a couple little mounting provisions. Then we made a nice um, titanium mid pipe for it to connect to his HKS catback. Uh, it's a really nice, reliable daily driver. Now that we have a Haltech in it, we can actually tune it. We can see the data. I think the next order business for this car is gonna be a clutch. We had it on the dyno and we were doing some pulls and it just, uh, when we got into the boost, it builds so quickly, uh, the torque was just pushing past the clutch. It's a stock clutch. I didn't expect much of it, but this is what happens when you start modifying a little bit. So we'll do a clutch. We'll be able to turn it up a little bit. It'll drive really good. All the Haltech bits that we have in the car uh, will able let us see all the data and and really give it a good tune for the street. The stock tunes are very basic um, and they don't let you do anything fun with the car. So now the Haltech's in it and all the integration I did uh, with the intercooler sprayer and the factory anti-lag stuff and we got all the ALS working. That's the coolest part of this car, I think, right now. We're gonna hop in the car, take it around the block, we're gonna have some fun with it and just see what it does and show you all the little cool features that we did that make it a really nice daily driver, weekend driver, whatever you wanna do. Uh, it's a really cool Evo 4. 
to, to be honest with you, I kind of wish I used the analog more for what it was intended, but I really just to like shoot little flames at people. <laughs> at night, you could probably like, it's a nice thing to be able to like turn on and off so you can see it. It's it's pretty cool, you know, if you're driving by a guardrail and you all of a sudden you just downshift a little bit and you just hit the loud bang and you just hear it keep popping, there's just a bunch of red flames on the guardrail <laughs> just lighting up. That's cool. You gotta um, get some nighttime rollers for you with that thing. That would, yeah, that would be something cool. So I know um, before the Haltech you had the factory analog set up, but it would only work in fourth or fifth gear. Right. You had to be really into it. Like full throttle, yeah. above 5,500 RPM. Yeah. So when you're in fourth, at that when you're flooring, you're like 6,000, you hit the brakes, then it would go. But it didn't really work that well because I, I went out on some back roads and I would try it, and it was kind of violent when yeah. it would happen. Like it would almost, yeah. it would almost feel like fuel cut because you hear like the car would stop for a second then it would start going again and it would just maybe that was something else <laughs> that could have been something else too you know maybe it was something else but when i brought the car to you when i had it towed down there after the whole the turbo decided like <laughs> i'm gonna just eat myself but um you called me and you're like hey man what's your plan for this car like do you do you want to keep it 100 percent factory yeah. do you want to make big power and i was kind of like i kind of just want to i think 350 ish to the wheels i think it's perfect for how light the car is because we had the opportunity at that point. I don't yeah. think you were really planning on doing any of this anyway, but we had the opportunity to like put a turbo in it and put a ECU in it. Yep. At least do that stuff and do the most basic things so it at least sets you up for the future. So if you do want to do a motor, you do want to do something else, it's we did all the legwork. The fab's done. Yeah. Like all the things that take a long time are done. And that that's the thing, you know, and um, you know in my field working with other mechanics as well everyone's like you know 600 700 horsepower i got a, a buddy he's got an evo 10. i've never been a numbers guy like if 800 it feels horsepower good, if it feels good that is more important to me than any number that you could throw at me because and i've told i've told many other customers this i've told you this too the longer i can keep your ass in this seat you're going to be happier because you can be driving the car it might not make a million horsepower but it's going to last you three four years instead of being in two weeks we're like hey man it's blown up i'm like okay like I expected that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the the way I look at it is I like going to car shows, I like driving around, I like being able to run errands in the car and be comfortable, you know, because right. I've it's got AC still, like all yeah. that stuff. Everything um, works. You know, I, I had an RX seven with the with the three fifty small block swap and as great as that car was, it, it didn't run right and it's mostly because electronics, you know, trying to get that to work didn't really work too yeah. well. But if you have a project car that doesn't run, you lose the love. 100%. The longer and, it sits, like, it's like a declining yeah. scale of, like, I give a fuck, and it, like, goes like this. <laughs> and you, you see <laughs> it's it. It's zero, and you're like, sell it, part out. Yeah, kind of, you see it all the time <laughs> on Facebook time. Marketplace. is like, you know, I have this Fox body from years ago. You know, I, I did a bunch of stuff to it. It blew up. I just never got back <laughs> right. into it, you know? Yeah, you lose but interest so quick. If you drive, and I've had this car for two years, and, you know, and you you told me what was gone. That's how much it's going to cost. I'm like, do it. I want the just car get, back. Get it done, right. You know? Right. Faster and, I can get it back, that's it. Because I, I love driving the car. Like, there's not really much I hate about this car. And the other aspects, too, of the RS um, that I really liked over the GSR was I don't have AOIC. Right. Which but Yeah, this is a standard diff in this car. It's super, two limited slip diffs. Super nice. Which, the, I guess the AOIC, AYC is, I don't think it's really a fault of the fours. I think they're just so old now. I think they're starting to fail. The pumps are failing. Yeah, it's the pumps. It's not the diffs. It's the yeah. pumps. The pumps, the motors fail. Um, but I get the LSD diffs, which tend to have a bit more power. Yeah. Um, but I also have the full chassis bracing, bracing right. um, which the whole, which is a big deal. You get all that more rigidity. I don't have any of the um, insulation. So, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, None of these cars no have the sound deadening. They're, they're, they're probably a couple hundred pounds lighter. Yeah, um, this one weighs a little bit less than 2,800 wow. without a driver. Um, so when you put fuel in the car, like when you're close to E, you, can feel you it. hear it, you feel it, the car creaks, you're like, man, is my car breaking? You can watch it sag down as yeah, you're putting it's, gas. It's <laughs> crazy. And then, um, so that, that's a that's a good thing, but um, the, the gearing's great. But as you know, because you had to drop the fuel tank to put a fuel pump in, I sure did. and you cried about it to me. It's the only fault of this, this CT9 chassis that I don't like. They never made a provision in the top of the back of the seat. Yeah, you have to drop the tank, which which requires you to drop, uh, you know, the entire world out of the back of the car to get the tank out of the car. That and, sucks. but only thing I, I don't like about this car. But I will say, when you had the tank dropped, you were sending me pictures and the text message. You were like, "Holy shit, this car is f***ing clean yeah. for a lack of a better it term." Was. And you it was know, it was like it was peachy under there, like nothing was going on. Was a, was even you were like, "Damn, <laughs> dude, like good fun, bro." Yeah. And, uh, and usually and, they're clapped out. Like most of them, I don't even. I'm like, yeah, this is another clapped out Evo. Like, 
And I even I even remember like I told like hey I got an Evo four, and you're like it needs Jesus. <laughs> like before we even saw the car, you're yeah, like it needs know. Jesus. It needs I, I need you to know. I know you want to do all this. Let's let's make sure it doesn't need this first. Yeah. And then we got it. You did a compression test. You're like hey man, the car is actually much healthier than I thought. We're gonna get it cleaned up. We'll start going from there. And, and as we started digging into it, you're you're just like wow, it's clean. Yeah. And which doesn't happen a lot. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't like uh, it doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, it's 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 just one of those things where it's nice to be able to have um, to do some research and communities. Believe it or not, like yeah. the UK, they're they're big in Evos to this day. They're huge. huge. Yeah, the, the UK guys are really really. So big. if if you decide to get an Evo, and they always take them apart, and, they, and there's always guys like parting them out. There's always guys doing all sorts of weird stuff. So. I I advise you find a UK group to join yeah. and sit there and talk to these guys because you know there's. You know, uh, the knowledge is there too because I mean, you know, I want to call Pete up and be like, "Hey, man, I have this issue." Pete's like, "I got to call you back. I'm busy." Yeah. But at the same time, like, I don't want to call Pete for, "Hey, I have this sort of weird wiring issue," you know, um, and then go through there. But the MR gauges, you know, this yeah. is something that Pete's done before in the past. But a lot of guys in the UK have already done that. They've already discussed on making the temp work and, yeah. you know, yeah. Go. All of these cars have been done a million times. Yeah. Um, they've all like, you know, somebody's messed with them, especially in the UK. They've had these cars for 20 years. So like, we're just kind of getting into them and they're very similar to the US stuff, but they're not exact. So a lot of the nuances and the small things, like the parts and the little like doodads that you can't get, um, you know, we don't know about. So forums are a really good way to do it. Don't listen to everything on forums. Take them as like a, as like a, a, a like a grain of something like, okay, well that was helpful. Let me just make sure that that checks out yeah. you, before you, you know, you, you think it's like, you know, the last, the last all because Sometimes, I mean, everybody gets stuck, even in my industry, we, got, we all get stuck on something. So sometimes it likes, I like to jog my memory looking on the internet, which I don't try to do a lot, but like <laughs> you, you use it to jog your memory and think of a, a better solution. So these cars are really good like that though. Lots of support groups for everything out there. Um, I, I really appreciate you coming out and um, walking us through your car. I can tell the passion that you have for the car and, and, and how it makes you feel and the and passion in building it. And, it, it was uh, it definitely was transparent for me so we appreciate you coming out and and hanging out with us today. yeah my pleasure so I appreciate it man keep it up watch it uh, watch all the stuff in the links and um, we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching HD works